year I've been accumulating a new set of astrophotography equipment. I've upgraded to a Celestron Edge HD 11 Schmidt Cassegrain telescope and uh, with all of the various different fittings that go on that I also needed a large amount to carry the much heavier payload. So I deliberated long and hard and in the end I went for the Skywatcher EQ8R Pro which you see here. Now there don't seem to be that many videos out there showing the various details of the EQ8R Pro. There are a few, uh, but what I thought I would do, having now had a, a month or so to really practice setting this up, is I'd show you my setup process, and if you're thinking of getting one of these mounts, you'll probably find it useful to understand exactly how the various different things operate on it, and you could well find it useful in your decision process of deciding what you want to get. Of course, if you're buying an EQ8 R Pro, you pretty much know how to set up a mount by now, so I won't patronise you with uh, pretending that I'm teaching you how to set up a mount but uh, certainly you may find it useful in understanding a bit more about this mount and uh, hopefully help you make your decisions. So let's get started. So the mount comes with three uh, individual feet which are adjustable height as you'll see later and they need to be placed first of all. They have rubber rings on the bottom of them so they grip the ground really nicely. You can now fit the mount just rests on top of these three feet Make sure the legs are fully spread and then we can tighten up the butterfly or wing nuts to lock the legs in place. Note that the peg that's normally to the north side of the centre pin is actually on the south side on this mount. So you need to mount uh, to position your mount the right way around. And as usual I'm using a spirit level to make sure the top of my mount is level. But what's really nice here is I can use these rotating feet to adjust the height. It's a really nice accurate adjustment and once you get it into the right position you can then spin the collar on the foot right down to the bottom and tighten it off to lock that foot in place. These two nuts can be loosened with a, a ring spanner which just comes with the mount and then you can adjust the height of your pillar and then lock it back off again. Now we're ready to put the mount head on the top and it's got a really nice gearing system inside the pillar so you just turn this handle here and it screws the central thread up into the mount. There are two additional securing bolts. These are a bit fiddly to put in if I'm honest. You can spin them sometimes by hand and other times they seem to seize up and you have to use an allen key. A ball headed allen key is easier it's really awkward because it's so cl close up against the body, it does take quite a bit of time. Clearly if you're in an observatory this doesn't matter and you can uh, just lock them down once you've got everything in position and polar aligned. Next you have the adjustment bar for the altitude or latitude. Uh, it just has two little bobbles that screw in on either end of the bar. And it's a really nice mechanism, it's very smooth and very easy to adjust. I'll show you a bit in a little while. Now we have the two azimuth bolts. They're very long, it'll take a little bit of time to thread in. So I've sped it up. One on each side in the traditional way. So these two big uh, hand nuts on the side can be loosened off. Make sure these two locking nuts are also loose and now we can freely turn the altitude uh, or latitude adjustment during polar alignment. That's a very nice smooth mechanism. And once you're done, obviously you can lock off those two bolts and the two big nuts on the side. Next is the counterweight bar. As with everything on this mount, it's extremely solid, uh, heavy and, uh, and large and uh, just screws in with a nice big thread and uh, locks in quite neatly. It's got a stopper on the end that we can unscrew, which obviously is there to protect your toes and stop the counterweights from falling off. The counterweights are 10 kilos. You get two of these come with the mount. They're really solid, very nicely made but you certainly don't want one of those landing on your toe. 
So great care obviously at this step. And the locking nut going back in. So here are the connections for the mount, uh, at least some of them. So you've got the 12 volt DC power. I've actually bought a silicone uh, cable for this, just because it's a bit more sturdy. And plug in the hand controller, and the mount can be directly connected via USB. You don't need an EQDIR cable. The controller is useful in particular for the auto home because the EQ mod will not do auto home. So now I'm fitting the uh, pole master. I've bought an EQ8 pole master adapter bracket which screws very neatly on the front there and uh, the right length cable connects very neatly to the through mount cabling and in goes the USB cable for controlling the mount. Then we have the through the mount cabling of power and USB 3. It is now an active USB 3 hub uh, in the top of the mount. There were some uh, comments on a forum saying that it wasn't active but it, it is now so they've obviously changed that. So the saddle is Losmandy and you've got these three large green thumb screws for adjusting that, opening and closing. Now I've come indoors for this part of the video mainly because the weather turned pretty nasty out there and uh, it's easier to do this inside. So I fitted my telescope and balanced it in the usual way and the next thing I want to show you is the auto home feature which is a really nice feature of this mount makes it particularly good for remote observatories but it's also very useful for finding the home position you don't really need to worry about finding it you just tell the mount to do it for you so I'm just going to show you how you do that you start by switching the mount on like this and then the hand controller initialises So after a few seconds of initialising it says auto slew home question mark yes or no. So we press 1 to auto slew home and I've deliberately put the mount quite a way off of the home position in both right ascension and declination just so you can see what happens. So we'll press 1 now and off it goes. So what it does is it hunts for a sensor that tells it it's at the home position. It actually goes past it and then goes back a little and does the same thing on both the RA and the deck. So here it goes on the deck. And now it's decided it knows where the sensors are and it's moved to the home position. And now on the hand controller it says home position established. So that's a really great feature and now we, we know we're in the home position. In fact, that's the only reason I leave the hand controller connected now is so that I can actually do that at the beginning of my session because I use plate solving basically after I've done the home position. Everything's done by plate solving now. Uh, but I really, really like that feature. It's really excellent. What I found with this mount is that because it's so incredibly heavy, I mean, the head is like 26 kilos. I'm sure the tripod is actually heavier, but it's certainly more difficult to carry. Um, firstly, you need to be a strong person to, lift, to move this around on a regular basis. It's not really designed for portability. Um, it is very, very heavy, and it'd be quite easy to, to rupture something, to hurt your back, to give yourself a hernia carrying this stuff around. So it, it, it is very, very heavy. Um, but, of course, with that weight comes stability. And I've found, whereas with my HEQ5, if I even opened the back door or walked out on the patio, um, PhD2 would show me that I was moving things around. Uh, whereas with this, it is so solid, I can walk right up to the mount and walk around on my patio right by the feet of the mount, and it doesn't shift at all. It's so solid, and it really is a fantastically good performing uh, mount. I've had it guiding at an RMS error of 0.36 of an arc second already, uh, which is way better than anything I've ever really achieved before. I think the best I had on my HEQ5 was about 0.46 to 0.5, something like that. So really impressed with the performance. The clutches are really nice. Everything about it is really beautifully engineered. It just has a feel of quality and solidity about it. Uh, and uh, I, I have to admit, I really love this mount. I have no regrets whatsoever about buying it and I'd recommend it to anybody. I didn't buy the version with the very expensive uh, encoder on the RA axis. I thought long and hard about it in the end decided, no, I'm just happy to guide. I've got an off axis guider here 
uh, I'm happy to guide and I don't really want to spend the extra money uh, for that feature. But that's a personal choice. Now one of the other really great features about the EQ8R Pro is the through the mount cabling. I really can't praise it enough. And the main thing that through the mount cabling gives you, apart from things being neat and tidy, is it gives you the confidence to do an automatic meridian flip after you've gone to bed, just leave it to it and you know that nothing's going to snag. And that is such a huge uh, reassurance to me. I, I just think it's a fantastic thing. So I'm going to just quickly show you the through the mount cabling. So the static connections are here and there's actually a number of different types. But the ones that I use are the 12 volt DC and the USB 3 connections. And this part of the mount does not move once, uh, once your polar aligned, it's stationary. So that runs through your mount uh, and up to the Los, top of the Losmandi plate. So let's move to that position. So at the top of the Losmandi plate, you've got three 12 volt DC ports and four USB 3 ports. I'm using two of the 12 volt DC ports, one to power my main camera, which is a ZWO ASI camera, and the other to power my dew heater, which I fitted here at the top of the dovetail bar. On the USB side, I've got one connection short lead down to my pole master, and then I've got two further cables, one to my main imaging camera, and one to my electronic focus motor. My guide camera and my electronic filter wheel come off the ASI camera's own hub, so there's no additional cables required for those. So everything's really tidy. The only cable crossing the rotating interface is this one to the pole master. And if that bothers you, you can remove it. But I've actually found that this can rotate in RA plus or minus 90 degrees and it doesn't snag on anything at all. I really love this arrangement. It gives me complete confidence that nothing is going to snag when I leave this to do a Meridian flip all by itself. So all in all, this has just been a really great purchase. I absolutely love this mount. The only thing that troubles me about it is its weight. I have to be very careful about lifting it, moving the, the mount head and the tripod around. But apart from that, it's super stable. It performs really well. Everything is really built to a beautiful quality. It's really nicely engineered and really well thought out. Even the, the handles for carrying it around uh, are really uh, positioned really well. The tripod is a little more cumbersome to move around. Uh, but I've got used to that as well. The clutches are really nice. The through the mount cabling, as I've said, is fantastic. Uh, really, got, I've got very few complaints, if any, only the weight of it. That's the only thing I can really say. Uh, I wish it wasn't so heavy, but then if it wasn't so heavy, it wouldn't be so uh, stable, able to carry such a heavy payload and so resilient to me walking around outside in the back garden. Uh, the azimuth and altitude adjustments are really, really nice. They're, they're nice and smooth, easy to, easy to polar align. Uh, you do have to use a pole master or something like that because there's no uh, polar scope inside the mount, of course. Uh, but re I really love this mount. I'd recommend it to anybody strong enough to lift it. See you next time. Cheers, guys.